we are talking on uh, health research or biomedical research and uh, in some cases we have to measure the occurrence of disease in a particular population that is to find out the frequency of disease so to measure the frequency of disease you, we usually use three uh, terms one is count another one is prevalence and another one is incidence So all these are measures of disease frequency and today's class is on measures of disease frequency. How we calculate frequency of disease. So under this heading I will explain what is prevalence, what is incidence and how to calculate this prevalence and incidence and what is the relationship between these two and also certain uh, specific terms like population at risk, then the uh, attack rate, cumulative incidence, the uh, incidence density, etc. Okay, first is count. What is that? Count is used in very rare, very rare diseases for in a particular uh, community or a population. For an example, if there is, uh, it found out that there are six cases of meningococcal meningitis in uh, University College of Kerala in last uh, in uh, 2021 and the surveillance showed that there was no cases of meningococcal meningitis in that particular college for the last six or seven years. So that is for count and it is expressed in numbers and there is no nominator, there is no denominator for that. It is only expressed in count and the unit is people or the person. Six person got that meningitis, meningococcal meningitis in a particular area. It is for very rare cases. Okay, that is count. There is no unit for count and it is um, expressed in people, count of people. And if we want to compare two populations, this count become less useful. For an example, there was 100 cases of flu in Gujarat and uh, 10,000 cases of flu in New Delhi in a particular period of time. So we cannot get a um, idea on or we cannot compare this because we don't know how many population the population the number of people present in Gujarat and also the number of people present in New Delhi out of how many people they got 100 we don't know and out of how many people they got 10,000 we don't know so to compare this we want a denominator for this okay so there should be a denominator So, uh, with denominator, there are uh, commonly used uh, measures to disease frequency are prevalence and incidence. Okay, that is for comparison of two population. We use prevalence and incidence. And what is prevalence? Prevalence is presence of cases, both old and new in a particular population is called prevalence. Okay, prevalence include both old cases and new cases. And it has got the um, numerator is old and new cases and the denominator is the population at risk. Okay, this is numerator. And it also got a denominator. And Denominator include what the people at risk. Of developing the disease. And this people at risk is uh, expressed or determined by the demographic and also the environmental factors. For an example, the people at risk of developing carcinoma cervix is female population between 30 to 70 years of age. Okay, that is an example. And if people at risk 
data is not available, we can also take total population. And this is multiplied by a power of 10. That is 10, 100, 1000, etc. to make it a round value. Okay. Uh, so the prevalence is presence of cases, both old and new in a population, divided by people at risk or total population, multiplied by a power of 10. Okay. Um, power of 10 is given because if the population is very large and the cases present are very few, we get a very digit uh, number. In order to avoid that, we multiply it with a power of 10. Okay, so that is prevalence. And this prevalence can be of two types. It can be a point prevalence. Or it can be a period prevalence. As the term suggests, point prevalence is a prevalence at a particular point of time. For an example, I will tell you uh, that in a school, there are 150 students are studying in a school and the principal conducted a medical uh, checkup for the school to find out the presence of refractory errors on March 12th of 2020. And so, uh, there are 150 students in the school and the uh, medical checkup was done on March 20 of 2000, uh, March 12th of 2020 and they found out that 15 students are having refractory error on that particular day. So that is point prevalence. So what is the point prevalence? 15 divided by 150 and we got a percentage of uh, 1 by 10. So multiplied by power of 10, it is 10 percentage. Always the prevalence is expressed in percentage because the numerator is a part of denominator. So it is a proportion. Okay. So prevalence is a proportion because the numerator is always a part of denominator. The cases are a part of total population of that uh, area. So it is prevalence is a proportion express as percentage. Okay. And what is this period prevalence? Period prevalence is the prevalence at a period of time. In the same example, this was done on uh, March 12th of 2020, isn't it? March 12th, 2020. And the school uh, authority extended the medical checkup for one year from March 12 to March 12 of 2021. Okay, from 2020 to 2021. So, one year period. So, how will we calculate the uh, period prevalence? At the, at, on March 12, there was how many students? There was 15 students. And in a period of one year, they found out that 25 students developed refractory errors. So 15 divided by 25, the whole divided by again 150. 40 divided by 150 will come to around 0.27, that is uh, 27 percentage. So that is period prevalence. So point prevalence is cases divided by time. And the period prevalence is both old cases and also new cases divided by the but, uh, total population. Okay, this is only at that point how many cases? The whole divide, uh, divided by total population. And this is uh, beginning cases and the new cases over that period divided by uh, total population. So, point prevalence and period prevalence and it is expressed as percentage. And uh, what are the uh, factors which influence prevalence? From this we know that the prevalence is disease, uh, new disease into uh, duration of illness. Okay, so prevalence is new cases multiplied by duration, duration of illness. 
So if the duration is long, if the long duration, disease has got a very long duration, then the prevalence will increase. And uh, uh, disease with a very high infectivity, again <coughs> prevalence will increase. Diseases with low cure rate, it is not getting cured. Think that this tub is full of cases both old and new. And new cases are pouring into this. If the new cases are increasing, it may be either due to a high infectivity rate or due to uh, uh, immigration of patients. In all that cases, the prevalence will increase. And if there is very high rate of death, patients are going out of this because of death or due to uh, cure or due to um, immigration of patients. Okay, in all these cases, the prevalence will decrease. Okay. So, uh, these are the factors which influence the prevalence. And the prevalence is usually uh, used for assessing the health care need and it is usually used for chronic diseases. Okay. So, prevalence is for uh, prevalence is for chronic diseases and for assessing the health care needs. Right? This you have to remember usually asked MCQs. Chronic diseases and for assessing the health care need. Chronic diseases like diabetes we use the prevalence and also assessing the health care need for resource allocation we use uh, this prevalence. The incidence is a measure of new cases occurring in the specific population over a specified time period. Okay, that is incidence. Prevalence was included both old as well as new cases. But incidence is absolutely new cases occurring in a specific population and the time period is also specific. Okay, so this incidence can be expressed uh, in three ways. That is, uh, you can express it in absolute numbers. That is, uh, the number of cases are very less, with very rare diseases and also in a very small population. We can express it as absolute numbers. And also, um, in cumulative incidence, incidence and incidence density. Actually the incidence uh, is a very good useful tool to find out the usefulness of any preventive program or prevention programs. Any prevention programs. We can assess the effectiveness of any prevention program by looking at the incidence of a particular disease and this uh, uh, cumulated again the incidence is expressed as a proportion so if there is a numerator and also there is a denominator in all these cases the numerator is always new cases and always there is new cases and there is a starting point and also we will follow for a specific period of time. So we assume that at the entry point there is no disease for the cases. Okay. For the numerator. If they have already uh, contracted or there is already they had the disease they are excluded from this and they are included along with the prevalence studies. Okay. So we at the, from the entry point at the entry point there is no disease and then we will follow them for a specific time period. And also in the denominator, the people are at risk. They will come in the denominator. Okay, so denominator include population at risk. Population at risk of developing the disease. There is chance of every uh, uh, every person becoming a case. There is a chance of contracting the disease at any point of time. So that is population interest. So we can exclude again. We can exclude those cases. We uh, those people 
who have already had the disease and also we will exclude certain groups. Example, we will uh, exclude biological females from a study on testicular ca uh, cancers. Okay. And the follow up period also varies. For a uh, disease having a short uh, time period like a uh, common cold and also in some cases the follow up period will be very long like in a carcinoma. Okay. So this is cumulative incidence that is the proportion of new cases at, uh, and the denominator is population at risk. Cumulative incidence otherwise called the risk or otherwise called the attack rate. And as this is expressed in percentage, we, we have to multiply this with the factor of 10, like 10, 100 or 1000 as we did in the case of prevalence. So that is cumulative incidence. Okay. And what is the incidence density? That is the numerator is again the same. That is uh, new cases in a specified population at a specified time period. But the denominator is different. That is in this cumulative incidence it was a population at risk but here it comes as a sum of or the total person time at risk. Okay. So that is incidence density. New cases divided by total person time at risk. What is this total person time at risk? In finding out the incidence we think that the denominator is always the people at risk. So we uh, start calculating from the start of study and during the if we are following up for one year period at any time in that uh, one year duration the patient may get the disease or it may, uh, the patient may uh, lose to follow up or the patient can die anything can happen. So to make it more realistic comes this incidence density where total person time at risk is calculated. For This is an example of that. We are observing 10 person for a period of 1 year from January 1st to December 31st. So the first person we start observing at, from uh, recruited from January 1st and we followed up till uh, December 31st, he had no disease, successfully completed the trial. So the first person has got a 12 months of time period. Okay, the first person had 12 months of time period. And the second person recruited on January 1st and he contracted the disease at the end of August. August end he contracted the disease. So he was followed up for 8 months of time. So his time period is 8 months. And the third person was recruited from February 1st and he was followed up till December 31st. So again he had a time period of 11 months. Okay. And fourth one uh, from January 1st and at the end of September he got the disease and so he was excluded from the study. The person was recruited from July 1st and he was followed up till the December 31st. So again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, and, uh, six months. And the uh, sixth person was recruited on January 31st but at the end of April, he was lost to follow. He was not attending the phone, phone calls, so lost to follow. So he, uh, he got a time period of one, two, three, four months only. He may be living, but he, as he lost to follow, we excluded him from, from the study. So the person time was four months. And for seventh person, it was again twelve months. And for eighth person, he was recruited on April first. And at the end of July, he got the disease. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 months. And the ninth person, again, it was 12 months. 
and for the 10th person it was from April 1st to uh, December 31st. So again, how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 months. So uh, to get the total person time, we have to add all these. So that will, this is, uh, total of this will be the uh, percent time, total percent time, sum of this. So we have to add the 12 plus 8 plus 11 plus 8 plus 6 plus 4 plus 12 plus 4 plus 12 plus 9 and that will come to 87. So the denominator is the sum of percent time at risk is 87 and the new cases is 1, 2 and 3. So the numerator is 3. So the answer, uh, like his incidence density is 3 by 87 percent time at risk. So this will come to around uh, point 0.0345 percent month. These are calculated in months. Okay, so it will be percent month. So as this looks so ugly, we can make it to a round figure. So that will around... Uh, 3.45 per 100 percent months. If you want to uh, make it into years, we can uh, multiply it with the 12. So 3.45 into 12 will be uh, per 100 percent years. Okay, so this is how you calculate the incidence density. And the incident density is more of a realistic value and because we are looking into the laws to follow, development of disease and also the death after uh, including into the study. Incident density calculation is more complex than of the uh, accumulated incidence but you, you should know how to uh, calculate the sum of a percent time at risk. Because it is usually asked in MCQs for your uh, BCBR examination. Prevalence equals incidence into duration. Okay. So if a disease having a long duration like a chronic disease like in diabetes, the prevalence will be high and the incidence will be low. And, but in a disease having high infectivity and a long, uh, short duration like in common cold, the incidence will be high and the prevalence will be low. Okay, so this is a relation between incidence and prevalence. And this both these incidence and prevalence are proportions and it is expressed in percentage. You should also know, also the prevalence is a static number but incidence is very dynamic. It changes over time because the changes I already told in a uh, incidence density, the person at risk of getting the disease or uh, uh, he may go out of the uh, at risk population by death or after contracting the disease or after curing. So incidence is very much a dynamic uh, number and the prevalence is more of a static number. And you should also know the case fatality. Uh, case fatality is actually the, shows the severity of the disease. Here, the new, there is a numerator and also there is a denominator. And the numerator comes is the death, death due to a particular disease. And the denominator is cases, number of cases of the disease or the number of persons affected by the particular disease. Okay, and this is usually a uh, ratio or a proportion and it is not a rate. Although we call it erroneously as case fatality rate, this is not a rate actually, this is a proportion. It can be a proportion or it can be a ratio also. That is the number of death uh, divided by number of cases. Okay, so this shows the severity. And one more thing is the mortality, mortality rate. Okay. Mortality uh, shows the burden of disease in a particular population and in that case it is death divided by population. Mortality shows the burden of the disease and case fatality shows the severity of the case that is the death due to particular 
disease divided by number of cases prevalent at the particular time. So this mortality and the case fatality you should know and also the uh, relation between prevalence and incidence. So uh, to summarize I explained about the measures of disease frequency mainly incidence and prevalence and what prevalence is number of both existing cases both old and new in a particular specific population and uh, it's mainly used for chronic diseases and to find out the um, uh, resource allocation and the incidence is the presence of new cases at a particular time frame in a specific population and that is mainly useful to find out the um, effectiveness of any preventive prevention programs and also to find out etiology or the cause of a particular disease and also you should know how to calculate the per, uh, person time uh, at risk also. Okay.